QLC matrix effects part three. So in this video, I'm just going to show you another use for the matrix. What I'm doing is taking some strip lights and I'm just in this case, I'm mounting them vertically behind, let's say, a band or something like that. So using them as a backdrop to show you how we can create some effects on these uh, being used as a backdrop. Uh, what you'll need to have, though, is strip lights where you can access each light or each pair of lights, at least, in the strip light individually. In this case, I'm using a Chauvet Color Band PIX IP. I'm in 18 channel mode, so there are six lights in each light bar, and each light is accessible individually and as a red, green, blue. So you'll see six times three, so you see 18 channels here. If I slide this out of the way. You see red, green, blue, red, green, blue, two, red, green, blue, three, four, five, and six. So I can access each of the lights individually as far as red, green, blue goes. Now, if you have a light bar that has the individual access but has some additional channels, you may have to separate them out. What you can do is uh, set up the individual channels as generic RGBs and then separate out your other channels that like maybe like master dimmer or uh, color macros or things like that, you should be able to use it. But it's the easiest to use if you can set up your light bar like this uh, Chauvet does where I'm just accessing 18 channels, red, green, blue, three per light. So we have six lights per bar and I'm using four bars. And we're gonna set these up in a matrix so that we can use the matrix effects on it. So I'm using the four bars. Again, what you'll do, click here, hold down shift, click here right click and say add fixture to group. I'm going to say new group and I'm going to call it matrix. Let me call it matrix two. And uh, the width of this matrix is going to be four wide by six high. So four lights and then each one of these has six lights in each bar here. And I'm going to set that up like that. All right, so our matrix is created. Now, what we're going to want to make sure is when I set these up in my visual, I'm starting on this side and I start at the top to bottom. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So let's take a look at our matrix and how they set them up here. We may have to do some juggling. Um, so again, four, I'm going to go six by six here so we can see what's going on and we'll eliminate actually some over here when we get done. So here's my light one, two, three, and four. I'm going to want to make sure address one, head one is here. Now I need to do address one, head number two underneath that. Address one, head number three underneath that. Just click and drag. Address one, head number four underneath that. Address one, now I got to find address one, head five. There it is, address one, head five. Whoops, grab that button underneath there. And address one, head six down underneath there. So now we have address one heads one, two, three, four, five, and then six. This is the one color strip light that starts with an address of one and then goes up to 18. So my next one is going to be address 19 head one. So that's going to be this one up at the top. Address 19, there's head three. I can drag that down. Let me find another address 19 here. Uh, there's address 19 head six. That will go at the bottom. Address 19, head 2, there we go. Uh, address 19, head 4, 2, 3, 4. Address 19, head 5. So I think we have them all in order. Let's see. 19, head 1, 19, head 2, 19, 3, 19, 4, 19, 5, and 19, 6. Now, so this one goes from 19 up to 36. So now we need uh, light 3, which started address 36. So we need 36, head 1. Here we have 30, uh, I'm sorry, 37 head one. We have 37 head two. I'll just slide that one down. Uh, there's 37 head six. That one will go down here. There's 37 head three. That one goes up there. Uh, 37 head four. That one goes in there. 37 head one. There we go. Uh, are we there yet? 37 head one, 37 head two, 37 three, 37 four. Uh, that one's wrong. We need to move it. Oh, there it is. 37 head 5 and then 37 head 6. And now we just need to make sure these are correct. 55 head 1. There's head 3. 
Uh, here's head two, put that one up there. Two, three, four, five, and six. So again, drag them around and arrange them. So this is my fourth light, my fourth strip light over here. And I'm starting at the top with head one, head two, three, four, five, and six. So now I've got them all arranged correctly. I'm going to reduce the size so that we're just four by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we've got our matrix correctly set. So that's how you go in and edit it to get lights or pixels or whatever you want to be in the locations that you want them. So now that we've got everything arranged correctly to match my setup, now I can go over to functions and we can do some programming. I'm just going to save this. All right, so let's take a look at, we'll go right away here. Uh, we're going to go to up the top, maybe to plain color, and it's going to be red. Got to make sure you select your matrix up here, matrix 2 we call it, and then turn it on, and we can see that they all turn red over here. Now, again, since you know we're limited as far as pixels go in this setup, you're not going to want to do text because we've got the bars too far apart to be able to read the text. Um, they're not really close like this. So again, this is an approximation of what's going on. This is actuality, what we have going on on stage. But you can do a lot of linear effects here that are kind of really, really cool with this. And uh, let's go down and just pick a couple. For example, um, you could do even odd. So you're jumping back and forth circles like that. And again, you can select a separate color if you wish for your second color. Uh, select the lighter blue and select the, the top here. OK. And you can see that it's you know, really easy to really quickly create an effect that way. Or you could do them both at the same color and have them going back and forth. So a lot of the linear effects work. You can do a fill effect this way that goes from left to right. And this is progressing from uh, red to blue. Let me just turn them both red for now so we can see that. So you'll see this fill from left to right. Then don't forget, you can also do this vertically, which may be more effective. So now we're coming down, starting at the top and doing the six lights. Again, you can go in here and you can change up your timing to make this faster. Okay, so again, get some kind of cool different looks behind the group. Let's pick something else that might look um, fill, unfill. So it fills, does that kind of thing. So that can be, kind of be a neat effect behind there. And again, once you create something like this, all you have to do is go up and click on sequence. And now it's created the sequence. Let me stop this. Let me go to my sequence. There's my sequence. It created the 11 steps for me automatically. I'm just going to go to common timing, common step duration. And now when I play back, there it is. So then I can just take this sequence that I've created really quickly with this matrix thing and attach that to a button, put it in a queue, whatever I want to do in the show. It's just using this matrix effect um, part of the program is a real quick way to create some really cool effects very, very quickly. All right, I'm going to go back to my matrix here and go back to play mode so you can see what's going on. Let's pick another one that might look kind of cool. Um, the gradient thing. Again, try to create some kind of effect like that on your own would be very, very difficult. Um, you know, here it's super, super easy. And again, we just have to say, you know, click save the sequence. And let's just do that one, see what it is. Uh, that's the second sequence. To look at this, it created 15 steps for us just like that in one step. So now we can play that back and create that gradient effect. So. And this can kind of be a really cool backdrop for a group. If we're doing a theater production, we could always turn these strip lights around and point them at the wall so that you have something on the wall like you're almost like you're washing a psych, but you can have it as an active wash where things are actually happening back there. But um, just a lot of different uses if you kind of think out of the box for this. So let's take a look at maybe something else that might work with this. Uh, and of course, with the gradient, there's you know, rainbow. There's uh, the sunset gradient that you can use. It creates kind of almost like a fire effect. And there's the uh, ocean gradient that kind of creates the blues that way or shades of blue. And you can change the size again to get something that's more gradient like that. That's going to add more steps to your effect, but that's OK. And then you can also go in here and uh, change the fade times to make this a little bit more smooth than what you're looking at there too. So it can be a very, very, very cool effect for you to use. So. Uh, lines, because you can't see the connection of the lines, it's not really great, but it does kind of give you like a, a pixel, kind of pixelated thing there. Uh, we can go to uh, vertical, and then you kind of get lines like moving across here from different lines. 
Okay, kind of a random, it ends up being kind of a random effect when you do it that way. Uh, noise can be a cool effect, background noise, and again you can do color in there and you can adjust the amount of noise. So if you want something that's kind of random looking and you can do certain colors. And the idea is that, you know, it gives you kind of a, an active background rather than a static background, creates a little bit more interest in your production. Most of the time I'd probably use something like this as if I had a uh, group, uh, musical group or something playing at, the, at my theater. And I just wanted to do something a little bit more exciting with the background behind them. Take a look at what else we've got here. Um, one by one. You know, that's a good way to test all your lights. Checks all of them to make sure that all everything's coming on there. Um, opposite, you know, back and forth, in and out that way. Again, you can adjust timing. Um, plasma, and you can do plasma colors, kind of the same thing as we were looking at the gradient before. You can choose colors, you can choose the size, the ramp speed, and really change the this whole way the whole thing looks there. It can create some really cool looking uh, backgrounds. Random fill columns, and uh, again you can slow down the speed on this a little bit if you wanted to, make it look a little bit differently. So you just kind of have random filling columns, change the color, change the fade in time on it, maybe make the fade in a little bit more gradual to make it a little bit smoother, that kind of thing, fade in, fade out. So a lot of things that you can do with it to change the whole look of what's going on up there. Pixel by pixel per row, multicolor, random row. And I'm just going to change these back to zero here. So we have our timing back random row bouncing across, so that's an interesting pattern there. So I would say, you know, just experiment with this. If you think out of the box, you can create some really, really cool effects using these strip lights.